Hey there, are you someone trying to incorporate UX, UI, or design in your life? Or are you someone looking to change your careers and want to give UX, UI a shot? Well, if that's you, you're at the right place. This course is the best for someone who wants to give UX, UI design a shot and get a taste of what it's all about. So check out this course and let us know in the comments below your thoughts. Welcome back everyone. In our previous module, we explored the fascinating world of user research, where we gained valuable insights from our potential users. Now, we are ready to dive into our next module, where we'll discover the power of desktop research, also known as secondary research. So, what is desktop research or secondary research? It's a research method that involves gathering information and insights from existing sources, such as articles, reports, case studies, and online resources. It's like conducting research from the comfort of your own desk. Desktop research or secondary research is a valuable tool in the UX UI design process, especially when it comes to creating a user-centric landing page. By conducting this research, we can gain a broader understanding of our target audience, industry trends, and best practices. Now, let's explore some of the different kinds of desktop research you can conduct. Industry analysis, user behavior analysis, and content analysis. The first one, industry analysis, this type of research focuses on understanding the broader industry landscape in which your product or service operates. It involves gathering information about your competitors, market trends, and industry benchmarks. By analyzing the industry, you can identify opportunities and challenges that will inform your design decisions. Second one, user behavior analysis. This research aims to understand how users interact with similar products or services. You can explore user feedback, online reviews, and performance metrics to gain insights into user preferences, pain points, and expectations. Understanding user behavior will help you create a landing page that caters to their needs. Thirdly, content analysis. This research involves analyzing existing content, such as articles, blog posts, and social media discussions to uncover relevant information and trends. By studying the content related to your industry or target audience, you can gain insights into popular topics, user sentiments, and engagement patterns. These are the different kinds of desktop research that you can explore to gather valuable insights for your user-centric landing page. In the next video, we'll delve into the practical aspects and guide you on how to conduct desktop research effectively. We'll also look at the step-by-step -step process of conducting desktop research and uncover valuable insights to shape our user-centric landing page. Now, let's dive into the practical aspects and learn how to conduct desktop research effectively. When it comes to conducting desktop research, there are several steps you can follow. And we'll take a look at the real-life UX case study on HKTV Mall side by side. Step one, define your research objectives. Clearly identify what specific information or insights you're seeking through your desktop research. This will help you stay focused and ensure you gather the right data. In the case study, we learned that they want to find out ways that HKTV Mall can improve their user experience. To achieve this, they conducted extensive desktop research to gather insights and make informed design decisions. Step two, identify reliable sources. Look for reputable websites, academic journals, industry publications, and case studies that are relevant to your project. Ensure the information comes from reliable and trustworthy sources. In the case study, they analyzed industry reports as one of the research methods. They examined competitors like Amazon, Taobao, Foodpanda, and Tmall.com. Step three, collect and analyze the information. Read and gather relevant data, insights, and examples that relate to your research objectives. Take notes and highlight key points and organize the information in a way that's easy for you to reference later. In the case study, they take notes and screenshots of user feedback, online reviews, and social media discussions related to HKTV Mall and its competitors' platform. 
Step four, synthesize findings. Once you've collected all the information you need, it's now time to analyze and make sense of it. This helps you identify patterns, trends, and key takeaways that will guide your design decisions. Now, synthesizing data is an important step, but it's quite a big topic that we'll cover in another lesson. But for now, let's move on to the next video and do an exciting activity together. We'll conduct some desktop research for the product you chose in the last few videos. It's a fun way to explore existing designs and learn from the best practices in our specific field. So let's jump into the next video and dive into the fascinating world of conducting desktop research for our own products or projects. We're going to explore the fascinating world of desktop research by actually doing some research. It's an exciting method that allows us to gather valuable insights from existing designs and user experiences. So let's get started. Step one, define your research goals. Before diving into desktop research, it's important to clarify what you hope to achieve. Ask yourself and jot down on a piece of paper or on FigJam, what specific aspects of your product or project do you want to explore? Are you looking for design inspiration, ideas for improving user experience, or understanding how similar products work. By having clear research goals, you'll stay focused and make the most of your research. Step two, identify relevant platforms. Next, think about the platforms or websites that are similar to your product or project. Where can you find products or services that align with what you're working on? Identify a few key platforms that you can explore during your desktop research. These could be competitors, industry leaders, or platforms that offer similar features. Step three, explore the platforms. Once you have your list of platforms from step two, start exploring them to learn more about their products or services. Take note of how they present information, organize their website or app and guide users through their experience. Pay attention to the visual design elements, such as colors, fonts, and images. Think about what you find interesting or effective in terms of how they present and showcase their offerings. Step four, analyze unique features. Now, let's take a closer look at the special features or functionalities offered by the platforms you're researching. Are there any unique features that make the product stand out? How do these platforms handle common tasks or interactions? Analyze and take note of these special features as they might inspire ideas for your own product or project. Step five, document your insights. As you explore and analyze different platforms, make sure to document your insights. This could be through notes, screenshots, or creating a visual board with elements that inspire you. Keep track of key findings, interesting design patterns, and any ideas or improvements you come across. Remember, the goal of desktop research is to understand the product better and gather insights that can help you enhance your own project. By exploring existing platforms, you'll gain valuable knowledge about industry trends and user expectations. That's it for this activity. I hope you found desktop research interesting and gained a deeper understanding of your product in your domain. In our next video, we'll delve into another exciting research method. So stay tuned and keep up the great work. We've completed the user research interviews and desktop research. And now it's time to take the next step in our case study journey. So what comes next? You now need to organize and make sense of the data you've collected. In the world of UX UI design, this process is known as research analysis. Research analysis is a crucial step in the UX UI design process. It involves carefully organizing and examining the data and insights we've gathered to uncover meaningful patterns and insights. The goal of research analysis is to transform raw data into actionable insights that will guide our decision-making process. By conducting research analysis, we can understand our potential users on a deeper level, identify their needs, preferences,
pain points and expectations. This knowledge will enable us to create a landing page that truly resonates with our target audience. There are various methods and techniques for conducting research analysis. Let's explore some of them. Thematic analysis. This approach involves identifying recurring themes or patterns in the data. You look for commonalities among user responses and group them into meaningful categories. For example, if multiple users mention the need for a user-friendly interface, you would create a theme or category around ease of use. Number two, affinity diagramming. This technique involves organizing user insights into groups or clusters based on their similarities. You write each insight or observation on a sticky note, then group related notes together. This helps to visually identify trends and connections among user responses. The third one, quantitative analysis. In addition to qualitative data, you may also have quantitative data, such as survey responses or ratings. Quantitative analysis involves summarizing and analyzing numerical data to identify trends or correlations. This can provide statistical insights into user preferences or behaviors. Number four, journey mapping. Journey mapping visually represents the user's experience or journey with a product or service. By mapping out the different stages, touch points, and emotions users go through, we can identify pain points and opportunities for improvement. In the HKTV mall case study, they used affinity mapping, which helped them to organize and make sense of their research findings by grouping related insights together. It's a simple and effective way to identify patterns and themes for your research. These are just a few examples of research analysis techniques. The key is to choose the method that best suits your data and research objectives. Remember, the ultimate goal is to extract meaningful insights from the data we've collected. We're going to dive into the exciting world of research analysis. It's a crucial step that helps us make sense of the data we've collected from user research and desktop research. So let's get started. To assist you in the research analysis process, I've prepared a few templates that you can use. If you prefer a visual approach, you can utilize FigJam, a collaborative whiteboarding tool to create infinity maps, diagrams, or visual summaries of your findings. For organizing and analyzing your data, Google Sheets provides a structured and flexible spreadsheet format. Lastly, if you prefer a more traditional document format, you can use Google Docs to create a research analysis report or Google Slides for a presentation. Feel free to choose the template that best fits your needs and preferences. You can find the templates in the course resources section. So, step one, review your research findings. Begin by revisiting the data you gathered during your user research and desktop research activities. This could include interview transcripts, observation notes, and insights from exploring different platforms. Take some time to familiarize yourself with the information you've collected, looking at both your user research and desktop research. Step two, look for patterns and themes. As you review your research findings, start looking for patterns and themes that emerge across different data sources. Are there recurring behaviors, preferences, or challenges that users commonly mentioned? Group similar findings together and give them a descriptive label. These patterns and themes will help you identify key insights from your research. Step three, identify user needs and goals. With the patterns and themes in mind, focus on understanding the underlying needs and goals of your users. What are the fundamental motivations that drive their behavior? By identifying these needs and goals, you'll gain a deeper understanding of what users are trying to achieve and how your product or project can address their needs. Step four, generate insights and recommendations. Based on the patterns, themes, and user needs you've identified in step three, it's time to generate insights and recommendations. Insights are valuable observations and understandings that can guide your decision-making. Recommendations, on the other hand, 
are actionable suggestions for improving your product or project based on the insights you've uncovered. Be specific and provide clear explanations for each insight and recommendation. Step five, communicate your findings. The final step is to effectively communicate your research analysis findings to your team or stakeholders. In this case, just to yourself. Use clear and concise language to convey your insights and recommendations. Visual aids such as charts, diagrams, or infographics can help make your findings more engaging and easier to understand. Remember, research analysis is all about making sense of the data you've collected and turning it into actionable insights. By finding patterns, understanding user needs, and generating meaningful recommendations, you'll be equipped with valuable information to drive your product or project forward. That's it for this activity. I hope you found the research analysis process insightful and empowering. In our next video, we'll explore another important aspect of UX UI design. So stay tuned and keep up the great work. Bye. Congratulations if you made it this far. You have what it takes to become a UX UI designer or incorporate UX in your career. So I highly recommend to keep the momentum going and to finish this course if you haven't already. And if you have, check out accelerate.co for more options.